Hello, welcome to um, Prayer Time with me, Becky Brown, Associate Pastor here at the church. And today is Wednesday, so it must be prayer time time. Um, today we'll share a scripture lesson and devotion, and then um, we will uh, share in our prayer concerns and prayer time together. Um, today I'd like to look at Luke 19, uh, verses 1 through 10. Um, this um, this passage is the Zacchaeus passage, and it's the gospel lesson um, that is slated for the lectionary for this Sunday. Um, so um, please hear the word. It's verses 1 through 10, chapter 19 of Luke. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man there was named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, Has he, he has gone to be the guest of the one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and I have defrauded anyone of anything. If I, I, if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. This is the word of God for us, the people of God, and we say, Thanks be to God. Um, so when we think about Luke um, chapter 19, when we think about this uh, passage in, uh, in our Bibles about Zacchaeus, um, you know, it, we've heard this story many times. If we have been in the church for a while, it's um, famous for songs, for Bible school, and um, discussions about this small man who decides to climb into a tree to see Jesus is one that is familiar to us. Um, as I was reading it today in preparation for our time together, I um, began to see um, something different in the passage in that um, thinking about this man and Zacchaeus and the transformation that is going on in him um, is, is a unique thing to, to think about today. Um, it got me thinking about those people who um, maybe uh, make us frustrated or we know that are living sinful lives or you know, or quote, not good people, um, the people who um, have walked away from the church or have uh, have said they don't believe in God, um, people who are living active, harmful lives to us or others around us, and we see them um, kind of living destructively um, and painfully in the world. And, um, you know, it, it, this, this sense of um, when the righteous feel harmed by the fact that something good happens to someone who has been so painfully um, sinful or um, outwardly not, not engaged in, <clears throat> in the ministry of God or understanding um, faith in Jesus. <clears throat> and yet they have a place of honor um, with Jesus, you know, in this moment. And so it makes me think about um, the importance of um, redemption of people. Um, so if you think of Zacchaeus, you know, everyone knows him as a sinner. Um, everyone knows him as someone who um, is, are actively doing people wrong. And um, so he's not liked because of that. Um, but yet he has a desire um, to know Jesus. He's curious about who this man is. He's curious as to how um, this person um can be the Messiah and wants to learn more and has this, this connection to Jesus. And, you know, the response of the people is the grumble, grumble, you know. <laughs> um, how is it that Jesus could be their guest, um, ask, you know, ask to be the guest at Zacchaeus's house and not my house? You know, I'm living faithfully. I'm following Jesus. I'm going from talk to talk to talk to talk, you know, like moving along and listening to everything he's saying. And yet, here this man is, you know, and he gets called out and gives the privilege of hosting Jesus. That's not fair. 
Um, so it's, an, it really think when I think about it, I think about those people in my life who, um, I might have that reaction to, you know, well, that's not fair. How did Jesus come to you and not me? Um, and, um, uh, makes me think a little bit more about, um, you know, why that would bother me. Um, but then also moving to the place of gratitude that, um, those who seek Jesus find Jesus and to give thanks for the people who are like the Zacchaeuses in our life. Um, the fact that they are able to have those intimate moments with God and um, those moments are important and cherished and um, glad to know that they have, have those experiences because they need them too. Um, so those are my thoughts today um, about Jesus and Zacchaeus. Um, our scripture, I mean, our um, prayers for today um, are as follows. We continue to pray for our staff, Kathy McNeil, who continues with her chemo treatments, and Willie Hubbard, who um, asks for continued prayers as he anticipates Betty Lou's funeral service on Saturday, um, this Saturday, October 29th at 11 a.m. We pray for Catherine Young at Arrowhead Cove. Um, she's going to be having a birth birthday on Monday, Halloween. Um, she'll be 95, and so we pray for her, and she continues in hospice care. Also, um, Jane Baker has been in the hospital, but she is out now. She is, um, has been moved to Autumn Care and is doing well enough for visitors. Um, so the family would like to pass along their thanks for all of the prayers and support for her. Um, and so if you are interested in visiting Jane, she would like to receive you. We also pray for Adriane Valdivia Gonzalez. Um, she's in the hospital in labor and um, we'll be delivering their baby Noah soon. So we pray for them and for um, her husband, Jeff Hoover, as they um, are enduring the labor process. And we pray for a safe delivery of their baby boy. Prayers for um, family members now, for Phil Hocott's daughter, Jennifer, for Donna Wilkins' son, Ross, at Autumn Care, for Ashley Calhoun's wife, Paula, who's homebound and bedridden, for Ash, Elise McSwain's sister, Carol, um, she's in the hospital now and is steadily declining, so we ask for prayers for their family, for Elise and Doug. Um, they've, they have gone to travel to be with the family, um, so prayers and gratitude that they're able to do that. Prayers for Teresa Courtney, who continues um, to ask for prayers for her grandson, Cameron, who's still in the hospital and recovering from major surgery. Um, for Sandy Forrest, who is Judy and Charles Matlack's daughter, is receiving chemo and seems to be doing okay. For Gail Robertson's daughter-in-law, Dana, who continues to await the birth of their baby. Um, who they are hoping, of course, the baby will hold off a few more weeks. Um, it will be coming early, but we're hoping that um, she'll continue to um, have the baby in her womb a little bit longer. Prayers for Corinne Faircloth's friend, Faye, who's a neighbor who's recovering from a respiratory illness. Um, Beverly Bard continues to ask for prayers for Diane Mills, who's at Duke Hospital and having various health concerns. Also, her son-in-law, Rick Mull, is having back surgery tomorrow, so we pray for his surgery to go well. Linda Jackson, um, who lives in Kansas, has is going to have a mastectomy, or had a mastectomy, I'm sorry, this past Monday, um, and has breast cancer, and so we pray that all went well for her surgery and that her recovery is smooth. Prayers for Jean Lipscomb's friend, um, friends. He's asked for prayers for comfort for the friends of Lambert Wilson, who was tragically killed last week, so we pray for them. Also, um, Marianne Way, who's home from Smoky Mountain Rehab. We're grateful she's um, doing better. Ian and Catherine Smith um, asked for prayers for Ian's mother, Mary, who's, who fell and broke both of her wrists. Um, so prayers for a healthy recovery for her. Don's asked for prayers for um, Chris's dad, Rick, who has been in the hospital for six weeks. Um, prayers for Chris's mother, Carol, as well. Um, who is a caregiver for him and pretty tired. Prayers for Kim Shipman, who's had a procedure uh, yesterday that went well and waiting for the results of that. So we pray for her as she continues um, to wait on that. 
Also, we continue to lift up um, Dwight and Shirley Oltman. Dwight has not been doing well as of late with his health, so we pray for them. Those are all the concerns that um, I'll mention today. Of course, there are a few that are kept confidential, and we want to make sure that we, we continue to lift them up in our prayers. Um, so let us go to God together and pray. Holy and most merciful God, we give you thanks for the way in which you continue to um, come into our lives in unexpected ways. Um, sometimes we find ourselves convicted of um, the feelings of um, it's not fair. God, we know there are people in our lives that we can look at and say, wow, they're really not living a faithful life or they're not living a, a life that re is representative of um, Christ's follower. Um, we have those people in our lives we know that are causing harm and they don't seem to care about it. Um, and it's in those folks that we see that um, we would struggle with understanding how you would come to them in a powerful way. For we all seek to know you more. We all seek to um, have an affirmation that you are there, that you care for us, that you love us, that you desire to be with us. Um, we seek to have encounters with you um, where we um, know that you are the divine, that you are living among us. So help us in those moments of jealousy or confusion. Um, help us in those moments where, um, where we're struggling with the fact that those who have harmed others or harmed us so overtly um, may have beautiful encounters with you um, that we want for ourselves. So God, we ask that we would um, move to a space of, of excitement and joy um, for those people who also desire to, to for redemption and desire um, to know you and to have experiences and encounters with you that are meaningful and profound. And God, may we continue to pray for all of those we've mentioned today, for um, those who continue with treatments that are difficult um, week after week, month after month. We pray for those who anticipate surgeries that are difficult and the, and the after effects of, of continued procedures as well. We pray for the family members that have been on our list for, week, for weeks and um, for all of those um, with cancer that we pray for. There are many who are receiving cancer treatments that we continue to lift up in our prayers. We also pray for those who um, have lost their loved ones or who are at the bedside of those that are um, slowly slipping away. We pray that their hearts would be comforted and they would know your strength and your joy and your peace. God, we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks for joining me for our prayer time, and I'll see you this time next week. Take care and God bless.